Hey friends, what's up? Ash here with Jensen's. Hope you're doing well. Time for some more first impressions on another new release. And today it's the new H24 Eau de Parfum from Hermes. Now, uh, in case you missed it, in case you're unaware, the original H24, I don't like. I'm not a fan of this. No. Not for me, no thanks. And when this came out, a lot of people did dump on it, myself included, obviously. And then a lot of people started to come around and like it. Kind of like what happened with Dior Homme 2020, only I never came around to like this one. But today we'll see if it changes with the new H24 Eau de Parfum, if this is better. So let's crack into it, guys. Let's give it a spray, let's give it a smell, let's see how it is. Now this one I bought from Macy's.com. It was $137 for a 100 ml size bottle. And a really weird thing, I actually went to check online and see what the price was for the 50 ml on this, and I can't find it anywhere. So it's like H24 Eau de Parfum has been removed from all the websites it was on. It's, it's really weird. It's not on Macy's. Like I clicked the link in my email, my uh, order confirmation to go ahead and look this up and it's just off the website entirely. Like they don't even have a page, like a landing page for the fragrance anymore. So it makes me wonder if Hermes got in touch with these companies and they were like, guys, you put it on too early. Take it off the website now. And then Macy's was like, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll do that. But we're gonna ship it to all the people that bought it first. Sorry. I don't know if that's actually what happened, but I like to think it is. So normally I would say that it's linked in the description, but as of when I'm filming, uh, I don't know anywhere that has it. If it changes, then I'll link it in the description. If not, then uh. And not that it has anything to do with H24, but if you shop at twistedlily.com or luckyscent.com, you know what you should do. You should use the code GENTS10 save yourself 10% off that website. Also word on the street is, Joma Shop is killing the Gen 8 code. Too many people used it, I guess. So Gen 8 code, it's a... Uh... Okay, let's open this. Packaging here, very reminiscent of the original Eau de Toilette version. You have the name of the house, the name of the fragrance, the size and concentration all right there on the front. This is a refillable bottle. Up top, you have the Hermes name. On one side, you have a QR code. On the back, you have the ingredients and also like a little instructional on how to refill your bottle. And then on the bottom, you have your badge code and barcode. My badge code is 13623. And here we have the bottle. It looks the exact same as the original H24. There is really no way to tell the difference other than this one is darker. And also on the bottom, it's going to say Eau de Parfum. So you can tell the difference there. The batch code is etched into the glass on the back of the bottle in the corner, 13623. And then you have the Hermes logo on top of the cap. So I guess uh, moment of truth. Let's go ahead and spray on H24 Eau de Parfum. Let's see how this is. This is, in my mind anyway, Hermes's attempt at making a fragrance that captures market share from fragrances like to an extent, your Sauvage Bleu de Chanel. To give them credit, this definitely, or the original anyway, does have a unique scent profile when you compare it to those fragrances. So if nothing else, give them points for that. Here we go. Good atomizer on it. Let that settle for just a second. All right, going in, Let's see how it is. You know, I don't mind the opening, but with the original, I didn't mind the opening there either. This one comes across a little bit more floral in the open than the Eau de Toilette to me. So it has a much more pronounced floral aspect to the fragrance. It still has that little bit of a green tinge, good amount of sweetness in the opening, just like the original. And it also has that metallic type feel to it as well. It has like a faint underlying earthiness, but not like a, a very natural earthiness. It's like this computerized, digitized AI version of an earthy fragrance note or something, but it's not unpleasant. I like the way it smells here in the opening. Coming together pretty well. It does have a little bit of that metallic steam kind of vibe going on. With another fragrance, I might describe that as being like slightly dusty or something like that. It's got that kind of scent profile that when you breathe it in, you can almost feel it going into your lungs for better or for worse. I mean, if you were going to say one thing about this in terms, again, going back to that comparison of trying to take market share potentially from the Blue de Chanel's of the world, it's that this fragrance, at least in the opening, does not have as easy of a, an attention grabbing, mass appealing, versatile, very easy to pull off opening like a fragrance uh, of Bleu de Chanel style or Y Eau de Parfum or Dior Sauvage or Versace Dillon Blue or 
any of the multitude of fragrances that are kind of vying for that piece of the pie that those fragrances are, are hoarding. Got a, a nice touch of class to it. Uh, honestly, in the opening, it doesn't come across overly masculine. It's like unisex leaning masculine, but it smells good. Yeah, I like the opening here. So first step is done, and now we gotta wait for it to dry down. Because for me, that's where the Eau de Toilette just kind of fell apart, where I really, really stopped enjoying wearing the fragrance when it settled into that clary sage, sclarine, just overdose. That was rough. I will say though, even though I like so far this Eau de Parfum more than the Eau de Toilette, you can tell this is age 24. There's, there's no doubt about it. There are changes to it here, obviously. There's a difference in how it comes across. It does smell like it has a little more depth to it. And that's one of the things I really disliked about the Eau de Toilette when it hit the mid and the dry down is that it felt like it was lacking depth to me. It was just very, eh, just kind of sharp and flat and tinny and I didn't like it. I'm gonna go ahead and let it dry down and then I'll come back and let you guys know if it stays positive or if it goes completely off the rails and bursts into flames and, and heads into radioactive waste. Just becomes an absolute catastrophe for me or if it or if it works. So uh, I'll be right back and I'll fill you in and also have my wife check it out too. So I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. So first thing I did is had my wife check the fragrance out with the opening let it dry down, had her check that out too. And uh, not great, not great. So she did a little a little curl of the nose, which is never the best reaction when you have somebody smell a fragrance. When you're like, hey, check this out. And the face they make is this one. That's, uh, yeah, it's not the best. Now to be fair, she did say that she liked this new one a lot more than the original one. So that's positive. She also agreed with me that the opening is way more floral then the original H24 comes across at least with more of a floral feeling to it. As H24 Eau de Parfum dried down, she did warm up to it a little bit. She said it started to smell a little better. She likes it for sure more than the Eau de Toilette, but still not in love with it. So as far as getting the wife's approval on this one, not gonna happen, at least not yet, not with this first wearing. So how does it come across to me? Better than the Eau de Toilette, worse than the Eau de Toilette? Does it fall apart as it dries down, all that good stuff? Well, some good news here. The Eau de Parfum smells better to me as it dries down than the Eau de Toilette and it's by a pretty big margin. So as I mentioned before, one of the problems that I had with the Eau de Toilette is once it worked into the mid and the dry down, to me, it just didn't offer a lot. It didn't really change anymore past that. It just kind of laid flat on my skin and uh, didn't really smell appealing at all. Actually, H24, the original Eau de Toilette, is one of my least favorite designer fragrances and how it comes across, at least as far as major releases from major houses go. Thankfully, this fixes for me a lot of what made the Eau de Toilette broken. So you still have that clary sage, you still have that sclarine overdose, but here there's at least some woodiness that I can pick up as the fragrance dries down and some oak moss that gives a little depth, a little nuance, a little richness to the fragrance as it dries down. Now the same thing kind of happens in the Eau de Parfum that happens in the Eau de Toilette. And again, these fragrances, they're pretty close. This really is another one of those situations where you have a flanker that says, hey, here's an Eau de Parfum of this Eau de Toilette. And that's exactly what it is. It's a fragrance that smells a little richer, more concentrated, a little higher quality, but ultimately smells a lot similar to the fragrance it's a flanker of. I bring that up because of course you do have some flankers where you have an Eau de Parfum or a Le Parfum or something like that. And it doesn't actually smell like the Eau de Toilette. This one does. So if you absolutely hated the original like me, you may still hate this one. There's not an enormous ocean of difference between the two. Yeah, as the Eau de Parfum dries down here, it has a little more going on. It doesn't smell as tinny, as metallic and flat as the original, but it still absolutely does have that clary sage and full effect here. It has a little residual sweetness from the opening that carries over into the mid and the dry down. Obviously, this is a fragrance that is not gonna come across smelling hyper natural or anything like that, but you should already know that. It's not the type of fragrance that this is. The evolution of this fragrance is very similar to the evolution of the Eau de Toilette. So in the opening, you get that, that burst of sweetness, you get that green around the edges. With this one, like I said, you get a little more of that Narcissus flower that comes through in the opening as compared to the Eau de Toilette. It's a little unisex leaning 
in the opening, but as it dries down, it does start to get more masculine. All of this is just to say the evolution is pretty similar in the Eau de Parfum to the Eau de Toilette, but in the Eau de Parfum, you have more depth and it doesn't come across smelling so one one note, if that makes any sense. It's kind of like having, um, you know, food or uh, a really masterfully done drink or something like that. You have these different things that unfold. And when you have a fragrance that's just kind of laying there, it's just not too much to it. And that's how the Eau de Toilette came across. It's not very interesting. The Eau de Parfum, thankfully, has a little more going on, a little more oomph to it. So this one, for me, is a big improvement over the Eau de Toilette. I would take this 10 times out of 10 over the Eau de Toilette. I actually find myself liking this, so that's kind of scary for me. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that, but I don't mind it. I don't mind it. I've been smelling it through the day and yeah, yeah, I gotta say, I, I kind of dig it. And this is uh, one of those fragrances where I'm liking it right now, I'm, I'm enjoying the smell, but I find myself wondering you know, when am I going to reach for it? Maybe not all that often. I think that might be the issue with the Eau de Parfum for me. So it's not that I, I dislike it or anything like that. It's just what situation am I going to be presented with where I go, oh, you know what I want to wear? H24 Eau de Parfum. Probably not too many. That being said, you know, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. I'll try to wear this out and about a little bit, see how it works on me, see what kind of reactions people have toward it and then I'll report back to you guys down the road. But this first impression, I'm actually really pleasantly surprised here. I thought it was gonna be a complete catastrophe uh, like the first one was for me, but this is good. This is a step in the right direction. I dig it. Not in love with it. To be clear, I'll reiterate that, but I dig it. And since this is the first time wearing it, can't really go into great detail on performance or anything like that, but it seems pretty good. Projecting pretty well, I can pick it up still yet, so it seems above average, seems like a really solid performer. And if you do like this scent profile, like if you really love H24, I absolutely think you need to check this one out. If you were a little iffy on H24, still check this one out, go into a store, spray it on, assuming they have it in stores. And in terms of seasons, I think this stuff is, is pretty versatile. I think overall, if I were gonna place it right now, I'd say spring, fall. It's got that versatility to it. You know, it's got that ease of use a little bit more, I'd say, than the EDT for me anyway. So there we go, H24 Eau de Parfum. It doesn't suck huge ones, and that is a win at least for me. All right, I am out of here. If you managed to get your hands on this before Macy's unceremoniously removed it from the website, let me know what you think about it. If you're a team H24 or anti H24, let me know. I'm anti H24 Eau de Toilette and I'm cautiously optimistic right now that H24 Eau de Parfum is gonna grow on me more and I'm gonna like it a lot. We'll see. All right, I am out of here. Thank you very much for your support. Stay safe out there. I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.